my name is Meredith McBurney and I'm a biologist with Rocky Mountain Bird Observatory and today we are near Denver, Colorado at a state park called Bar Lake State Park. Um, it's out near the Denver airport. And in the spring and the fall of every year we come out to a place like this and monitor migratory songbirds. Um, this is a science project. We are interested in learning what birds come through here, how many, um, the mix of males and females and younger birds and older birds and all of this information teaches us about birds and helps us to conserve them and to identify habitats that need to be conserved. We try to pick places that have proper habitat and some water. Birds need food, they need shelter, they need cover like plants and trees to be in and they need water. And Bar Lake is one of the perfect spots to catch migratory songbirds because we have all this here, here and it's in the middle of an area where there aren't many other trees. As you can see right here we have big willow trees and we have a lot of low foliage. Um, birds like this low foliage. They get down in it and they can hide. And so this is a really perfect habitat. These little songbirds are going to come in at dawn and they're going to be looking for a place to sit down in the morning to spend a couple of days to uh, recover, to fatten up, to put on more fuel, which is just like putting gasoline in our cars for the birds. And they pick a place where they've got potentially an abundance of food and shelter and water. And this is a great place. And there's not much like this around here. So we put up our nets in places like this. Every spring and fall at various locations around Colorado, Rocky Mountain Bird Observatory runs these banding stations. And the goal is to catch birds and put bands on them and to learn something about um, their age and their sex and their species. And then all of this information is gathered together into one master database so that every bird that's been banded in the United States or in Central America or in Canada is all together. And if we catch one of those birds again, we can learn something about how long it lives and where it goes. Um, and all of this information helps us to figure out how to both make habitats better for them to figure out areas that have to be conserved so that we will have these bird species um, long into the future. As you have seen we set up these mist nets and they're very fine very thin nets and the birds fly into them because they really can't see them. Typically the first thing you do is get the legs free so that's what I'm doing right now. And then get him in a secure grip so he doesn't <coughs> escape. And we come along and we take them out and then we take them back to the banding station. We put a band on every bird. Each bird gets its own individual number and then we will measure it and weigh it. We will check it for fat. Um, we will determine whether it's a male or a female and then we will let it go. She doesn't have a lot of feathers on her belly. Eleven point nine. One of the other reasons we have a banding station, um, most of the time when you see birds they're flying around in your backyard um, or you're seeing them out when you're out hiking and you really don't get a chance to get a good look at them and see their feathers up close um, and get a good sense of what they really look like and what we're going to be able to do for you um, is to really show you what birds are about. Now just don't close your hand he will just sit there for a second and off it goes. Okay, we don't I love my job. I may have the best job in biology. I may have one of the best jobs on the planet. This is a western wood peewee ready to go back to the band. Being able to look at and see birds up close and to contemplate what their life is like and what it must be like to leave my hand and take off and fly down to Central America and then six months later to come all the way back here, these little tiny birds, I can't imagine a better job.
I'm Andrew Dahl here at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. I'm the ornithology fellow. Uh, that means I take care of the bird collections here. Uh, we have an extensive collection. We have over 50,000 bird-related objects. This is uh, bird skins, bird mounts, uh, nests, eggs, um, all sorts of bird-related materials. So we have bird species from uh, all across Colorado, across the United States, and around the world. Historically, our bird specimens are typically skins, um, but more recently we've been taking uh, tissue samples which allow for uh, genetic analysis and other molecular work to be done on demographics and distribution of these species. So we have a, a wide diversity of species here in Colorado, thoroughly represented here in the Denver Museum, from little tiny warblers and hummingbirds to uh, your big eagles and hawks. Most of what we'll be focusing on here is little songbirds. So in Colorado, we have a, a large population of resident birds, birds that live here year-round. We also have breeding birds that build their nests here, raise their young. Uh, but we also have many migratory species that come through the state um, on their ways between their um, typically South American and Central American summer ground. Although these birds are just passing through, they're an important component of the ecological system here in Colorado. Uh, so another reason why we keep uh, bird specimens here is uh, for those hard to identify species. Here I have three different species of sparrows. They're all our typical little brown birds. They can be very difficult to identify out in the field. Here in the museum you've got a better chance to get a look at specifically what defines different species in their physical appearance. This song sparrow, you can see the uh, distinct streaking on the breast, whereas uh, these two smaller um, chipping and brewer sparrows don't have that kind of marking. So this is a yellow rump warbler. This is a common species we find here in the state. Catches in a lot of our nets uh, with Rocky Mountain Bird Observatory. The males and females of these birds are uh, strikingly different. The males have this nice slate gray appearance with uh, bright yellow patches. The females are more drab, olive green, gray color. They still have the yellow patches that identify them as the yellow rump warblers, but it's not as obvious in the male. That's a common characteristic amongst bird species. The males are the more brightly colored ones, uh, trying to attract the female's attention, uh, whereas the females are more drab colored um, to give them more protection while they're nesting. So the labels contain some of the most important information about these birds. They, we've got them identified as species. Uh, it's also where we keep the record of where they were collected and when they were collected. And they typically have uh, measurements on them, so uh, wing lengths, total lengths, their weights. It also indicates the sex of the bird, also any breeding condition measurements, whether or not they were uh, ready to produce young or not. So occasionally, some of the birds that are banded at our banding stations uh, end up here in the museum. Uh, this bird uh, flew into someone's window, and they brought it into us, and now we uh, take care of it here at the museum. Here you can see the metal leg band that was put on by the Rocky Mountain Observatory in uh, 1990. So this bird has been here with us for quite some time. This is a typical study skin preparation. The bird has been stuffed with cotton. Uh, you can see the cotton poking through the eyes there. So everything that you see except for the eyeballs is a real bird. So this type of preparation is useful. It allows for future measurements of you know, wing length or total length. It also allows comparison of coloration and differences between sexes to be observed. Well, I've always loved birds ever since I was a little kid. Uh, what really fascinates me is the amazing migrations these birds make. Some of them, they're these tiny little animals. They're no bigger than a house mouse, uh, yet they travel thousands of miles to take advantage of breeding grounds and better feeding grounds. I like this job because I get a chance to see these birds up close and really get a feel for the amazing diversity that exists out in our world.